again and I have a fun project to show you today and let's start with some of the supplies you're going to need we have of course a roller to roll out any flat sheets that you might need of course you can use your pasta machine if you have one a blade's always handy and today we're working with these new cutters that we have in the shop and they are called plum blossoms and they're really cute and with these cutters, you can either cut out the, the entire piece and uh, not imprint the design, or you can imprint the design as well. It's totally up to you. We have, I've rolled out a couple sheets of colors that I liked, an orange and a fuchsia. And that's the third thickest setting on my pasta machine for this one, and this one's a little thicker, but you can go any thick thickness. It's totally up to you how, you know, how thick you want your piece to be. I have one of these rubber stamps that we have in the shop. This, they come in a set of six, and that's just to add a little texture to it. And then when we go to put together the earring, which I've already put one together here, you're going to need some pliers. You're going to need an ear, uh, two ear hooks. You're going to need a couple jump rings in a larger size to fit through on the top and then a smaller size to connect them. And you know, depending on how thick you choose to make your clay, that's how how big your jump ring will be. So, it's it's totally up to what you what size and thickness you do. And then I also have some Dewdrop Brilliance ink to add some of the silver to it. And then a knitting needle to poke the holes into it. And uh, here's a knitting needle. So, but you can use any anything that will poke a hole. You know, it can be um, just a regular needle or or one of those specific tools. It's totally up to you. This is one of my um, specific needle tools. So, you don't need much to get started. Um, let me just move a few of the things out of the way. This is actually the finished earring. And what I did was I stamped it here with the cutter as well as cut it out. Actually I used this size and then I added the orange to the back and I textured around here with the stamp. So let me move this out of the way and we can get started. Uh, now I, I started with the fuchsia color on the top and the orange on the back. So let's start with the fuchsia. Oh and I forgot to tell you a couple of crystals and these are Swarovski crystals those are just to add a little bling and, uh, you know, it's just up to you if you want to add that little extra touch. You know, I liked it. I thought it looked really cute with the, with the little bling in there. So that's what I went with. So let me move these out of the way. Okay, so I've conditioned my clay. I actually conditioned this the other day, so hopefully it's still, you know, pliable. So this is the conditioned clay. And I have this cutter. There's actually a set of four, so I didn't have this one out here. But this is um, the third largest. And so I just want to place it right onto my clay, push down, and then use the plunger to add the design to it. And you can use a release. And when I say a release, I mean either water or armor all or something to release the clay so it doesn't stick. But it's pretty chilly here in northern Florida, so I don't need it. And I'm just going to do one, and then I'll show you I already have the other one made. So let's do that. And you want to do the same size for the back. So you might need to clean off your cutters in between, because if it leaves the clay residue, you know, that could mess things up. Now on the back, I did not impress the design. I strictly used it as a cutter, but you can impress the design. So that, see on this side here, it doesn't have a design, but if I impressed it, then I could have the design on both sides. So that's entirely up to you. So, but I didn't. Oh, I didn't cut that out good enough. Let me get another cut over here. So press down, give it a little wiggle, and there you go. Now, you may need to clean up your edges, and uh, that's if there's any extra clay. And then I use my, my needle tool or my knitting needle and kind of roll it on the edges until I get it as clean as I like. And if there's any extra, you could always cut it off. It's just important to get it clean before you work with it so that it looks nice as a finished product. You can peel away any extra clay or cut it off like I said. So just run your needle tool on the edges until you get it as nice as you'd like it. So there I have that. So I'm going to turn it. That's the back side. So I'm going to flip that over. 
and I'm going to place this on the front. And line it up as best as you can. Now the, the color is going to show through, so that so you know it's 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 not you know you're not trying to hide that orange color because you want it to show through. So it's just that simple. And if you need to adjust it, just use your fingers and adjust it to the way you want it. Now, at this point, I wanted to accentuate these little dots, so I came back with my knitting needle and I and I poked each one of them again. So I did want to accentuate them. I mean, they're nice, you know, they're, you can see them, but I wanted to see them even more. So this is what I did for that. And I'm not poking all the way through so that, you know, it comes through the other end. I'm just poking enough so that I pick up the design. And then I take my, took my crystal, and you can do this before or after. Some, some people might want to do it before, um, after you add the ink. That way you don't take a chance of getting any ink on there, but it wipes off. But I just took... A little of the ink and rubbed it on with my finger to highlight it. Now I like the the color showing through so I wasn't going for a complete overall coverage. So just a nice little you know like sweep with your finger will be enough. And then you can put your crystal on. Yep. Now sometimes I use my knitting needle to help with that to get it in the spot I need it to go. If you don't have a particularly stubborn crystal. There we go. <laughs> So uh, I then once I get it in the place I want it, I push it in with the and I push it until I feel like it's gripped around it. The clay you want the clay will come up around the sides, and then I kind of just went around it like this to to highlight it a little so that you know whatever ink got there kind of gets wiped away as well. So it's that simple. And then I wanted to create a hole at the top. And hole at the bottom so that I can then hang uh, the smaller one from it. So in a twisty motion. And then I pick it up and I do the same on the back. Just a, like a little twist. And so you get a nice hole that's clean and uh, will work nice for you. So that's as simple as it is to make the design. I mean, you could certainly go elaborate with it, you know, and do anything you want. But, you know, I just was going for something simple. And then I have this little, little stamp, and I just went around the edges and textured it. Just like so. Just to give it a little extra. I always like to give my pieces a little extra. Just, it gives it a little extra oomph. So, so cute. And then I did the same thing. Let me move this one out of the way. I did the same thing with the smaller flower. I uh, cut a piece out of the fuchsia and I stamped on that one and push it right out. There's that. And then I did it with the orange. Again, you may need to clean it off because you see the color will get on the cutter. And this side, I didn't impress the design, I just stamped it. So there you have that. Once again, clean up your edges as best as you can. I'm not going crazy here because, you know, it's just wasting time for, for showing you on, online. But you can, you can do it yourself. And then again, I um, place this on top. And on this one here, I only need to put one hole because I'm not going to hang anything from the bottom. But let me go ahead and uh, do the same thing. I poked these little bursts or whatever you want to call them. You know, the little inside part. I, I used my knitting needle to do that. Just It gives it more definition. That's why I did that. And then you would add your other crystal. If I, here it is. I thought I lost it. Actually, you would add your ink probably at this point. Once again... Just a little highlight to bring it out and make it pop. And then the crystal goes on right in the middle. Once again, using your knitting needle or your poker to push it firmly in there. And when this bakes, it'll grab a hold of it and it's not going to fall out. So now on this, I just need one hole at the top here. And a little twisting motion. And then I'm going to pick it up again with my 
blade and come back on the back side and do that same twisting motion to get my hole nice and clean. Oops, I broke it. Okay, now this may happen to you. If you go too close to the edge, you can end up breaking the clay, especially if it's not, you know, properly conditioned. And I said, I, I conditioned this clay the other day, so it's probably gotten brittle. So, there we go. You can fix it just by uh, using your knitting needle and your fingers and, and repair it, which I just did. Just make sure that it's completely repaired before you go to bake it, because you're not going to be able to fix it once it's baked. Okay, so I took off a little of the ink, so let me just add a little more back on here. And there you have it. That's as simple as it is to create. And here's the pendant. I did the same exact pendant, except same exact thing with the pendant, except I used a larger cutter. So let me show you putting the earrings together now. So here's the pieces. These have already been baked. And uh, I used several larger of the jump rings and several small of the jump rings. So two of each is what I used because in order to get it to hang properly, you have to do that. Because if I had just taken this one and this one and left out that middle one, it kind of would be very stiff and it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a dangle earring. It wouldn't be as cute. So that's why I do that. Okay, so with jump rings, when you open them, you want to open them side to side. You never want to pull them apart because that can compromise the, the wire that they use for the jump ring. So you're going side to side. And you can use two pliers. Many people do. I usually use my finger. And then I put it through at the top. And then I close it the same way I opened it, side to side. And then I've got my little jump ring. And then I'm going to slip that right through the top. So let's see. Let me turn around so you can see. So here I've, slipped, I've got the big one. Here's the small one, and now with a small one, I'm going to connect to my ear wire. And so when you're connecting it to your ear wire, you want to make sure that you're putting it on the right way so that it hangs properly. Because if it's backwards, then obviously it's not going to hang properly. So I just slip that on. I try not to drop it, but here we go. I got slippy fingers. My carpal tunnel, all these years of working with the clay, has made my hands not as good as they used to be but you can get the gist. Okay, so then you close it the same way, and here you're gonna be looking at exactly how that would hang, which is perfect. And so now we're gonna go ahead and stick the big one into the smaller piece, same way, by moving the, it side to side, and now I'm gonna close it. And then I'm gonna take my little one, open that up, slip it through here, and then I'm gonna connect it on the, oh, I didn't put the bottom one on. Where'd that go? Ah, I don't have enough jump rings here. Hold on one second. So here I've got the other jump ring. Sorry about that. Okay, so then I would slip the jump ring in the bottom, which I did not do earlier, and close that. So what you want to do is you want to put one large jump ring at the top, one at the bottom, and one in your other piece. And then this one will, the smaller one, will be used to connect them. So slip that through that one. Make sure you've got the right direction. And slip that on. Ah. Sorry guys, my hands are not as good as they used to be. Okay, and then I'm just closing the jump ring. And voila! Now we got beautiful earrings. So cute. And easy to make. But beautiful. I mean, they're really, really cute. Um, these cutters come in four sizes, so you could go any size you want with them. You could do two small ones. I could do another small one if I want to make it even more dangly, like so. That would be cute, too. Have it going, you know, it just depends on what you like, you know. You do it to your taste. But real easy to do. And actually, I am going to give this pair of earrings away to one lucky winner. So... Leave a comment below and let me know um, what you like to make with polymer clay. And if you, you know, have any particular tips or tricks you want to share, go ahead and share those down there. And I'll pick one random winner and I will send you these earrings as a present. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Like I said, the earrings are super easy to make. You can do them in any color. You could add any kind of texture. You could change the color 
of the crystals. Um, you could use a gold finding and gold ear hook or a copper, which would totally change the look of it. But really, you don't need a lot of clay. I hardly used any clay to make these. So these make really, really cute holiday gifts, if you think about it that way. And we have a lot of cutters in the shop that you could do the same kind of technique with. And, you know, they're graduated sizes. And with the graduated sizes, that makes it really cute to make, you know, two different size um, pieces for your earrings and jewelry. So have fun with it, and I will see you next time. And don't forget to leave a comment telling me a tip or a trick or what you like to make with clay, and I will choose someone to win. And also, don't forget that we now have a virtual retreat that you can sign up for called Polymer Clay Adventure, and you can get there at polymerclayadventure.com. We have almost 500 people signed up for the event. There's 22 teachers from all over the world teaching, and it's all online. So no matter where in the world you are, you can attend, and that's, that's the beauty of it because... A lot of times you don't have an opportunity to go take classes for some of these people because they're so far away and travel expenses and, and you know, you have family to care for or whatever, or you can't get off work. But with this, it's all online so you can go at your own speed and uh, not have to worry about a thing. What's even better about it, you can get 24 classes over the course of a year for only $99, which is a, a big steal if you ask me. So anyways, check that out at polymerclayadventure.com. You can find these plum blossom cutters in our shop at polymerclaytv.com. See you next time. Mm -hmm.